Hello, my name is Peter Wesseling and I work for CGI in the Netherlands. My talk is on how to run a large and diverse regression test in parallel on multiple servers. I want to take you on our journey, on how we got a regression test running on multiple servers. This talk consists of three parts. First, some background on the project I'm involved with and where we developed the RTQ. Second, an overview on how the RTQ works and finally the third part a demo. EDGN commissioned a few years ago the development of the CARM system. CARM stands for Centralized System for Allocation, Reconciliation and Metering. It's a system used by the seven grid operators in the Netherlands. They moved from their own seven different systems to one centralized system. CARM stores all the electric and gas metering data of all households and industry meters in its system. It runs the allocation and reconciliation jobs on that data. It handles different interfaces to, di to several parties and processes thousands of messages on a daily basis. So one system to do it all. EDSN is also responsible for the maintenance and further development of the system. And within EDSN, a team of testers is responsible for testing the system, including the regression test and of course do we use robot framework for those tests. Where do we execute our tests? We have three different domains where we run our tests. We have the test domain with four test environments and two robot framework servers. We develop our test on that domain and also run regression tests. We have the acceptance environment with more than five different test environments and four robot framework servers. We run our acceptance test on that domain and also our regression tests, but also the performance test, which we support with robot framework. And finally, the production environment. We run every hour a test using robot framework from our robot framework server in that domain to check the performance of the GUI. A few years ago, we started with robot framework within the project. We were faced with the following requirements. We had more than 40 use cases. A use case is a description on how the part of the application should work with requirements, screen dumps and test requirements. That resulted in more than a thousand test cases. We can run those test cases in parallel, but not all. Some of those test cases could not run in parallel. We need to run the test on two different releases. We have the current release that's in production, but also the next release. Tests must run on both releases. Per test environment, we had a set of about 60 Windows batch files used to run the test, the robot tests in parallel. The difficulty was that it was hard to maintain. The reporting was also done manual of the results. And if we need to deploy a new set of tests and a new set of code, we need to do that manually. Per test environment, it looked like this. We had a batch file, which executes other batch files, which are executes other batch files, which executes finally somewhere a robot. The results were migrated to one CSV file using other batch files. But this is only one environment and the batch files were tailor-made to this particular environment. So in environment number B, we had the same set of batch files, robots and results, and so on and so on. This was not maintainable. Where are we now? The number of use cases could be reduced to 32, and the same applies to the number of test cases, 210, with almost test the same functionality. We have still tests that can run in parallel, but not all. And we're still running tests on two different releases, the current release and the next release. The Windows batch files were discarded and replaced by a tool that did the same, but then using Python. And that version evolved because the testers wanted to be more in control. So a CSV file was replaced by a, by a database and Running the test was replaced from scheduling using Jenkins, giving the testers more control and possibility to running 
test using the queue on their, on their own. During the 2021 Robocon, we saw a presentation on Test Archiver. So we implemented Test Archiver to do our reporting in combination with Grafana. And we used Jenkins to fully automate our deployments to all robot framework servers. So we ended up with a system which is easy to maintain and easy to run. How does it work, running a test? In Jenkins we have defined three different task jobs at the moment. One to run the regression test, one to run a single use case and one to run several use cases. Those tasks are stored in the RTQ database and the robot framework service running the RTQ look into that database and check if a task is available for them. If a task is available, the task is being picked up. When the run is completed, the XML is stored into Test Archiver and Test Archiver processes it and puts it in its database. Grafana looks in the Test Archiver database and can present the graphics. The report generated by robot is also available for the user, also through Grafana. We created a link to a central storage of those reports and the user can click on that link and the, re the robot report is opened. We now are at the second part, the working of the RT queue in more detail. When we start the RT queue, we tell it how much processes it m can use, on which environments it needs to run its test on, and which database to use. More options are available, like to make screen dumps, or which web browser to use, which folders to use, and so on. In run mode, it checks for new tasks, on the database, runs those available tasks against the environment it needs to, checks for stall test, we come to that later, and process the test results. So we can see it in Grafana in the end. Let's look into the run mode in more detail. First, the check for new tasks. We have some restrictions. We cannot run the same test twice at the same moment on the same environment and we need to handle the parallel and non-parallel task correctly. How do we do that? First, we claim all available ta free tasks and put those in a data frame. Some tasks can have run options, for example, to run on a specific day of week or only in the week weekend or on a weekday. Also, tasks can have uh, a specific run option to not run. If still tasks are left, and in most cases there are, we're going to fetch for each available task the task details. And with the task details, we get a lot of additional information. For example, if a test can run in parallel. If a test can run in parallel, we want to claim those, that task. If the task is uh, available, but a non-parallel task is currently running, we cannot claim that task and the rest will return false and we try with the next task. The same applies to a non-parallel task. If we try, try to claim a non-parallel task and a parallel task is running, the result is false and we cannot claim that specific task. And we try with the next task in the list. And that goes on until there are no tasks left or we get a task that we can run. If we find the task that we can run, then we claim the task ID. We already have claimed the task and we set the run ID to the, to the task ID. If we cannot find any task, then we wait. How do we determine whether a test can run in parallel or not? When we create a task, two records are created. One with the exclude tag, text sequential only, which means it can run in parallel. And one with the include tag, text sequential only, which means it can run cannot run in parallel. There is an additional field in the database which is set accordingly. That is the field parallel. So when the exclude tag is set to text sequential only, this field is set to true, and if the include tag is set to text sequential only, it is set to false. And that is used to determine quickly whether a test can run in parallel or not. What brings us to stall tests. 
Nothing is more frustrating than starting a test run and come to the office the next day and see that after 2 hours and 30 minutes the test run was stalled because a closed browser keyword was missing or commented out. And yes, I admit, with the batch files implementation we did not have that issue. That is, we did have it. We, need to kill, we needed to kill a number of Chrome driver processes now and then, but no test was stalled and, uh, and we got results. Going back to the batch files was unthinkable, so a solution was made. Telling the testers to make sure they closed the browser at the end of their tests. And we all know it works for a while and then we see the same happen again. Time for a more solid approach. Detecting stalled tests, mark them and get the task finished. And that is what we did. A separate process called control that monitors the processes and the folder in which the results are written. If a task does stall, it is noticed by control. The status is set to stalled and the other tests can continue if needed. Control marked the test as stalled. Other tests can continue and finishes. And we see here all tests have finished except one which has the status stalled. When it's possible, the Chrome driver process is being killed and the process that is being stalled can continue and finishes. When a task is finished, it processes the test results. It saves the generated reports and XML files to a central storage. It adds the results using the output.xml files to test archiver. And when all tests of a run have been finished, Rebot is being used to generate an overall report. With Grafana we can look to the results stored in the test archive database. We can see here an overview of the past, failed and skipped tests in total but also per use case. And we can see the total runtime of the test. In the right corner you see a link to generated overall report. Those overall reports are stored on a web server and can be consulted also without using Grafana. Time for a demo of the RTQ. Let me switch screens. As we can see here, the RTQ is been running on two different servers with four processes and control is also monitoring the tests for the stall test as I described before. Let me see what's in the database. There are no tasks uh, present in the database at the moment. And in a moment we're gonna feed the, uh, the RTQ with a number of tests. In total, seven different tests are being fed into the uh, queue and each use case has one robot file. It can also be multiple robot files, that should be no problem. Um, and the robot file consists of five, four or five different tests. One of the tests is this one. This is a non-parallel test starting the open browser and the goal is to trigger a stall test here. Other tests consist of sleep for one, two or three seconds and either a fail or a pass. And some other non-parallel tasks, the test has also been uh, available in other robot files. And this one is running parallel, but this one cannot. So. Let's add load the tasks into queue in the queue. Let me see if they the, if they're available. And yes, there they are. 14 ones. Each use case twice as described of the us as uh, told earlier. One with 
the include text sequential only and the other, other one with the exclude text sequential only. And this column, the parallel, defines if a test can now run in parallel or not. Let's look what's happening. As you can see, tests have been picked up and are currently running. What you can see here as well is the zip file created. It means that um, the process of storing the results into the central storage, the results are being zipped and sent to the central storage. In this case, it is a file. It's a it's a folder in the in the demo uh, folder, but in normal. In our normal process, it is on a uh, central file storage. And also the data is added to archive database, is also present after the task has finished. So that's the way we know that the data is available. Let's look into the database, see how we're doing. We can see that uh, some tests have finished and some still are running. There is now a non-parallel process running. Let's see how we're doing. Because we are running non-parallel tests at the moment, you see that the other server is not doing anything except waiting until an other task becomes uh, free. Once one server picks up the non-parallel tasks, it also, in most cases, completes uh, those tasks. It's also not predictable which use case is claimed by which server and which use case is processed in which order. Uh, it's this sort of random, I think not completely random, but it's not predictable anyway. We can also see that all the tests have finished, so the merge report has been generated. Let me see if we can find it and here it is and if we open this then we, we should see that the report exists We can see here the report and the results of the test. And all the tests are in here. Not only the test only executed on this specific server, but also from the other server. The demo showed that we can run our test in parallel or sequential, depending the talk of the test case. The RTQ helped us to run our regression test more efficiently with less maintenance, with less user interaction. It all runs fully automatically. Maybe you think, I also want to have the RTQ. Unfortunately, the RTQ is not public domain, but I'm working on a public domain version of it. If you want to be kept up to date on the progress of the public domain version, please reach out to me and I'll keep you informed. Thank you for listening to this talk.